Gemstone mining is one of the most consistently powerful money-making methods in the entirety of Hypixel Skyblock, which is why in today's video, I will be going over the four most common ways of grinding gemstones. These methods all have their different upsides and downsides, and my hope is that by the end of this video, you can properly choose which method is best for you at your stage in the game. I also spent a bunch of time in preparation for this video talking to some of the most experienced miners I know, so you can have the most accurate information about rates and strategies as possible. And with that, let's get right into the video. As a quick recap of the Crystal Hollows, there are a total of seven different kinds of gemstones which spawn across the Crystal Hollows in the five different regions. Each region of the Crystal Hollows is associated with its own kind of gemstone, with that type of gemstone only spawning in that region. The Goblin Hideout has Amber, the Jungle has Amethyst, the Mithril Deposits has Jade, the Precursor Remnants has Sapphire, and the Magma Fields has Topaz. There are also two other types of gemstones, which are Ruby and Jasper gemstones. Ruby gemstones are the most plentiful in the spawn across the entirety of the Crystal Hollows. Jasper is the exact opposite, and they are the rarest, and they only spawn in one specific structure, known as the Fairy Grotto. With that out of the way, the best gemstones to mine are Ruby, Topaz, Jade, and Jasper for four different reasons. I'm going to start off this video by talking about the ways that you can do these four different methods and their perks and drawbacks, and then from there I'm going to talk about the gear that you need to be most effective. The first type of gemstone mining I want to talk about is Topaz mining, which in my opinion is the easiest to get into. Topaz mining takes advantage of the naturally generating structure known as the Khazad Doom, which houses the Bal boss and is how you get the Topaz Crystal. The reason I say Topaz mining is the easiest to get into is because all it requires to be effective is a level 100 Bal pet, which is very, very cheap. A level 100 Bal only costs about 20 mil, and then to add a Quick Claw onto it, that is another 100 mil, but you don't need that to be effective. With the Bal pet, as long as you are below Y level 64, you will get a 15% bonus to all of your stats, which includes your mining stats. When topaz mining, all you really have to do is have a bal pet summoned, and then sit on top of one of the crystals and mine out all the blocks. You can also mine out the panes, but they give less resources for the amount of time they take. Once you're done with one crystal, all you have to do is teleport over to the next one and continue mining. The reason I say topaz mining is the easiest to get into of the gemstones is that all you need to get into it is a bow pet and whatever mining gear you have. Also, it's really easy to do because all you have to do is mine the already generated gemstones that are common throughout the structure. The main downside of topaz mining is of course all of the mobs that exist in the Khazad Doom, which can be somewhat annoying. The other main downside of topaz mining is that if you don't have a bow pet, it's practically impossible to do this method because you're just gonna die to the heat that builds up over time when you're in the magma fields. Personally, I don't really love topaz mining just because of all the mobs that you have to deal with while you're doing it, but it is really easy to get into and I would consider it a great introduction to gemstone mining. The next type of gemstone mining is probably my favorite because it requires very little effort, but is also very profitable, and that is mining jade. Jade mining is really easy because just like topaz mining, it utilizes an already generating structure which has tons of gemstones in it, and that is the Mines of Devon. At the top of the Mines of Devon are giant jade crystals. These crystals are full of gemstone deposits, and as you can see, each of them has a ton of gemstones to mine. The main downside of mining in the Mines of Devon is that you don't get the perks that you get from the bow pit while being in the magma fields. This means that if you want to be effective when mining in the mines of Devon, you kind of need a Scatha pet, and of course, Scathas are a very expensive pet. Fortunately, level 100 Scathas aren't nearly as expensive as they used to be, with a level 100 rare only being 90 mil, and a level 100 epic only being about 170 mil. Just like with topaz mining, the main thing that you want to care about when you're mining jade is of course the bigger gemstones, the block gemstones. Although Although they take slightly longer to break, they give significantly more gemstones to the point that it's much more efficient to just mine the block gemstones and entirely ignore the pain gemstones. In my opinion, when you're mining jade, because the crystal formations are just so much larger and you have to move around less, it's a lot easier and a lot lower effort to mine jade than it is to mine topaz. Add on to the fact that you don't have to care about mobs attacking you like you do when you're mining in the battle arena, it makes it a lot simpler and this is personally my favorite method of mining gemstones. The next type of gemstone mining is the most specialized, but is also arguably the most profitable, and that is Jasper mining. Jasper gemstones only spawn in one specific formation in the crystal
artificial hollows known as the Fairy Grotto. The reason that Jasper mining is so profitable is because Jasper gemstones consistently sell for double or triple what the rest of the gemstones sell for, and that's because they're the most powerful. Just like all other types of gemstone mining, it's pretty simple once you're actually here, but the actual process of getting here can be a little bit difficult, because there aren't very many of these fairy grottos that spawn per lobby, and most of the time the best way to find them is just by hopping around lobbies and buying them from other people. Because the fairy grotto can spawn anywhere in the crystal hollows, to be most effective you need both a bow pet and a scatha pet. As you can see right now, I'm currently in the magma fields in a fairy grotto, meaning that I have to use a bow pet to not die and because it's more effective. This isn't always the case and sometimes you'll have to use a scatha to be most effective. In general, my personal recommendation for fairy grotto mining is that you don't specifically focus on this, and rather, if you happen to run across one while you're mining for another type of gemstone, you spend some time mining in the fairy grotto, and then once the lobby closes, that's it for then. Spending the time looking for a big enough available fairy grotto takes a lot of time, and it also means that most of the time if you're going around searching for specifically this, you'll probably spend more time looking for it than you will actually mining. Of course, once you have found a decent place to mine, it is extremely profitable, but like I said before, it is very difficult to find these. It's also important to note that if you're trying to craft perfect gemstones, this is also where you source jasper crystals, and those are a rare drop from killing the butterflies that naturally spawn within the fairy grotto. If you're in a small fairy grotto like I am now, and you can't consistently mine jasper gemstones, the best way to get around this is just by mining the other gemstones in the region. Right now, because I'm in a magma field, the other gemstones around me are topaz and ruby, and if I just mine those while I'm waiting for the jaspers to respawn, I can keep up my rates. Of course, the biggest upside to jasper gemstone mining is just how profitable it is. A perfect jasper gemstone is 26 million coins, while the next most expensive is only half of that. Of course, the major downside to jasper gemstone mining is that at a macro scale, it is pretty inconsistent just because of how much time you have to spend looking for and getting to fairy grottos. The last type of gemstone mining that I'm going to talk about in this video is both the most sweaty and the most effective, and that is ruby mining. Unlike the rest of the gemstones that I've talked about so far, there are no naturally generating structures that have large amounts of rubies that you can mine, so that means the only way to effectively mine rubies is by finding them randomly throughout the world. Because of the way the Crystal Hollows works, gemstones generate at the same coordinates in every single lobby. I'm guessing to most of you this isn't really a surprise, because it's no secret that gemstone routes have been effective since the Crystal Hollows released. The way that ruby routing works is really simple. By having waypoints set at certain locations using a mod, you can then mine out pathways between these gemstones, and then from there, all you have to do is teleport between them, mine them out, and doing this you can make a ton of money by mining gemstones extremely extremely efficiently. The way you set up a gemstone route is really simple. First, you use a mod that has waypoints such as Skytills to set certain waypoints at different gemstones. From there, once you join a lobby, you mine to the beginning of this route and then go from 1 to 2 to 3, digging out tunnels big enough for you to teleport through. Once you're done with that, all you have to do is go through and mine out the gemstones. With a route like this, once you're done mining out the entire thing and you're back at the beginning, the beginning ones will have respawned already, meaning that you you can go through this cycle infinitely. There are a few ways that you can optimize this. The first of these is the Aspect of the Void, which allows you to teleport quickly between two gemstones just by shift right clicking. The other most important thing to note when you're mining out gemstones is that when you can use the Mining Speed Boost ability, you should use it on Topaz. Because there is tons of Topaz along the Ruby route, whenever you have your Mining Speed Boost ability, you should use it to mine the Topaz because Topaz sells for significantly more than Ruby. The last thing to note when gemstone mining rubies is that you do actually have to mine out both the glass blocks and the glass panes. This is because there aren't really any ruby routes that can mine just blocks and be entirely infinite. This route in particular is extremely efficient and was made by two friends of mine named Tebby and Trevania. I'd also like to quickly mention that without Trevania I would not have been able to make this video, so huge shout out to him. If you have any questions about this route in particular, his discord is linked in the description, so I recommend reaching out to him. All of the coordinates for this route route will be linked in the description below, and also if you want to just directly import this into Skytills, I will also have the import command there as well. I'd also like to quickly shout out Zingle
Crystal and Rice Blades 11. In general, the main upside to Ruby Routes is that it's just so profitable. Ruby mining is by far the most effective way of making money by mining gemstones, however the downsides are that it's kind of sweaty and it takes a little bit more effort than the rest of them. Based on my experience, depending on where you spawn within the Crystal Hollows, it normally takes around 5 minutes to get to the starting location, and then from there it takes between 15 and 20 minutes to mine out the paths between the gemstones. This means that in order to actually start mining gemstones using this strategy, it takes around 20 to 25 minutes. And if you're okay with that, then I totally recommend that you do this method because it is extremely profitable. The last thing I have to say about this method is that if you are doing this, you have to have a bow pet because like topaz mining, it is in the magma field. And so if you don't have one, you will be taking a lot of damage and are gonna die. Once again, if you are interested in the coordinates for this route, they are linked in the description along with the Skytills import command. Of course, just knowing how to gemstone mine isn't going to actually gemstone mine for you, so that means the next thing we need to talk about is the gear and the heart of the mountain trees required to be most effective while gemstone mining. When it comes to gear, it shouldn't really be a surprise that the best gear possible for mining gemstones is going to be maxed out Divin's armor and a Divin's drill. However, of course, a setup like this will cost you well over 1.3 billion coins right now, and not everybody has that kind of money. In my opinion, the cheapest that you should go if you're trying to mine gemstones effectively is Sorrow Armor and a Gemstone Gauntlet. If you spend a little bit of money getting some decently enchanted and reforged Sorrow Armor, it'll normally only cost you around 50 million coins for the whole set, and then if you want a decent Gemstone Gauntlet, that's only about another 30 mil, meaning in total you can get this set up for less than 100 million coins. If you are doing this, however, it's really important to note that your rates will not be nearly as good as what I'm about to discuss. In my opinion, the best budget mining option is going to be Divin's Armor with only 3 of 5 chambers applied and not having to utilize perfect gemstones, and using a 655, and a decent one like this will only cost about 200 to 250 million coins. However, as important as your gear is, it really isn't quite nearly as important as your Heart of the Mountain level, and this is where this part of the video is actually not from my own experience, because the advice that I'm about to give is actually beyond my progression in the game. Once again, a huge shout out to Trevania. To be decently effective, it's recommended to have at least 4 million of each powder type, so that means 4 million mithril powder and 4 million gemstone powder. Of course, it also shouldn't have to be said that you shouldn't be gemstone mining before your Heart of the Mountain 7. This is because Heart of the Mountain 7 unlocks some of the most powerful perks for gemstone mining, and that is also where you need to put most of your powder. When you are putting powder into your Heart of the Mountain tree, the first things that you want to focus on are going to be the mining speed and mining fortune perks, both level 1 and level 2. On top of that, Professional and Fortunate are both very powerful as well. If you do choose to ruby mine, I recommend that you level up your mole perk a little bit just so that it doesn't take forever to clear out the route. It's also pretty well known at this point that if you are gemstone mining, you have to disable efficient miners so that it doesn't mess with your pristine procs. Like I mentioned earlier, this 4 million of each type of powder mark is where you are going to start being the most effective, and personally, I don't actually have that yet. Trev also recommends that if you really want to get into gemstone mining before you have 4 million gemstone powder, you should at least have around 1.5 to 2 million gemstone powder. According to him, gemstone mining before this point really just doesn't make sense. Being fully maxed out takes around 9 million gemstone powder and 14 million mithril powder, and if you're interested in learning how to do this, I will link a couple of videos in the description below that are tutorials on how to most effectively grind powder. Once you've unlocked Heart of the Mountain 7, got 9 million gemstone powder, 14 million mithril powder, and spent well over a billion coins on gear, you'll be able to most effectively grind Hypixel Skyblock's best money making method. At this point, you will be making between 20 and 30 million coins per hour, which is by far better than anything else in the game. It is important to note, though, that not all ways of selling gemstones are created equal. First of all, you can't NPC flawless or perfect gemstones. Also, depending on the day or time of day even, it can change which rarity of gemstone is the most effective to sell. Although gemstone grinding isn't nearly as powerful as it was when it was first released, it is still an extremely good money making method, but with that, I'm pretty sure that just about wraps it up for this video. If you are interested in utilizing this money making method and you have any further questions, I recommend that you comment them down below, or you join my Discord server, or if you're really interested, you can contact me or Trevanya directly through Discord. With that, that just about wraps it up for this video, I'll see you guys later, and adios.